Hello amigos and welcome to another episode of Inside the Ropes with Coach Mario. Coach Mario, owner and head coach of Warriors Pride Boxing Academy here in Miami, Florida. How are you guys doing? I hope everybody's fine. Had a great evening last night, like Saturday night. It was uh, one hell of a card uh, where we saw some good prospects coming up and we also saw uh, that relentless beast called Arthur Better Beef. I had said before the before the whole fight took place, I had made my predictions online. I had told some of my friends and on Facebook pages that this fight was not going to last. It was going to go from eight to 10 rounds was my prediction. I was short by one round. I was short by one round. Better Beef is a true monster. He is one of the most dangerous guys in the sport of boxing. And today what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the similarities between Artur Beterbiev, who is a beast, no doubt. And I tell you something, uh, this man is going to give b-ball headaches, man. Uh, and we're going to talk about that in a few seconds. But again, we're going to talk about similarities between Artur Beterbiev and... Uh, Subriel Matias, El Orgullo de Maternillo from Fajardo, Puerto Rico. We're going to talk about how much these two guys look alike. Not only in their record and their percentage of knockout ratio. It's 100% for both of them in their wins. I know that Matias uh, lost one decision, but uh, he was able to avenge that. So, in my opinion, he's got 100% also just like uh, Better BF. He's knocked out every opponent he's ever faced all right only one person survived and then he destroyed them so um we're going to talk about similarities and looking at the at the fight last night i was looking at uh some of the things that better be does and it's it's like um you know him and um and Subriel matias are like you know identical twins it's unbelievable how much their styles look alike and a lot of people have said that uh, Matias and um, David Benavides uh, are very similar in styles. But I can tell you, uh, in my perspective, in my opinion, I believe that Better Beef and Matias are more similar than any other two fighters out there. I mean, it's unbelievable how much they look alike. All right. And um, going back to last night, some of the comments that I saw. Uh, uh, by the by you know the people that were there talking about the fight uh, the newscasters and everybody else they were talking about how dangerous my, uh, you know um, uh, Artur Berbiev is and the, you know, the, the most dangerous man in boxing but nobody ever mentions Suriel Matias not even uh, in the uh, section where they are actually talking about uh, you know the 140 pound division they, they mentioned every single other fighter. They mentioned Teofimo Lopez. They mentioned Devin Haney. They mentioned Ryan Garcia. They mentioned Rolly Romero. But they did not mention Suriel Matias. And they're starting to, to look a little shady, guys. You know, this is not normal. I mean, if you're talking about the, the, the 140-pound division, you got to mention Suriel Matias, man. He's knocked out everybody. I mean, he's a very dangerous man. So there's got to be some kind of plot. And I'm not a conspiracy uh, conspiracy theorist, but I believe that there's something uh, amiss and the uh, whole situation where they, they don't, nobody mentions Matias. They're trying to ice this guy because he's very dangerous. And now, unfortunately, that happened to Hagler and it's happened to a lot of other fighters. However, Matias, they're going to have to contend with Matias because he is a true champion, legitimate champion. All right. And you're going to have to take that belt from him. So he's going to continue destroying all his opponents until somebody finally says, you know what? We got to fight this guy. Nowadays, it's uh, it's, it's going to be uh, something more difficult because the perspective and the mentality is just to make money and not legacy and not the best fights. But going back to um, well, what I'm talking about, the similarities, we're going to go over that right now. All right. Watching the fight last night, I saw a smaller a uh, smaller, better BF out jabbing Callum Smith, a taller opponent with longer reach. All right. He stayed 
um, moving his head and a, a fast jab, a fast, powerful jab. And if you look at Better B have thrown that jab out there and you see Matias, they both look very much similar. Matias it throws a lot of jabs. Mat Matias throws a lot of jabs that are very powerful. He's able to jab his opponent and, uh, and actually um, dominate them with that and start breaking them down with that, with that short, powerful jab that he, that he throws as he's moving forward. So that's number one similarity, uh, the power jab between both of these guys. The other thing is, no matter how, how slick the fighter is, no matter how tall or, you know, how much reach advantage they have over uh, Better BF or Matias, they are able to cut off the ring, both of these guys. Both of these guys walk forward, constantly moving forward, cutting off the ring, uh, uh, moving into positioning so they can throw their power shots, you know, uh, constant pressure, you know. This is something that both of these fighters have, something that I've noticed that um, a lot of um, uh, so-called experts and, and, um, and casual fans and, and, and other fans from, uh, that have, that believe that slick fighting is gonna, is gonna beat a powerful, relentless, uh, indomitable fighter like Better Beef or Matias, They've been wrong. I mean, how many how many fighters, slick fighters, have these people have in their resume? I mean, uh, you can see Matias have had that of uh, has fought every single style. So has Better Beef. Now he's gonna now he's gonna fight Better Beef is gonna fight Bevo, who's a very slick, good fighter. But I tell you what, guys, I'm leaning towards Better Beef by stoppage. I don't think anybody can stop Better Beef in that weight class, and I don't think anybody can stop. Matias in that weight division, 140 pound division either, because they know how to cut up the ring. They know how to throw that jab, power jab. All right. They have that relentless pressure. That's number three, relentless pressure. They're constantly pressing on their opponent. They're on their face. They're on their mug all the time. They're right in there throwing punches, combinations, cutting up the ring. I mean, it, it is. I'll tell you something. And it's what I tell my fighters at my gym. I tell them, listen, you got to learn how to deal with pressure. You got to learn how to breathe. You know, in order to survive a fight like that, you have to be relaxed. But it's hard to be relaxed. Well, you have a monster like that in, in, in front of you, just throwing punches. And each punch is a devastating punch. You know, they hurt all over. And you could see that yesterday in, uh, in Better BF's fight against Callum Smith, how, how from the beginning he started throwing those hard punches to the arms, to the, to, to, to the body, to the head, even in the gloves when, when Callum Smith was, was blocking some of these punches. I mean, that shit hurts. And, and Matias is the same way. Every single punch that he throws and lands anywhere in your body is going to hurt. They have heavy hands. That is the next one. Short arm punches. Number four, heavy hands. This guy's hands are like bricks or like hammers. It's like a sledgehammer. Even if a sledgehammer hits you softly with not a lot of pressure, it, the weight of that hammer on your body, you know, it's going to come a point you're going to say, oh, crap, I don't want to get hit with that anymore. And that's what's going on right here, you know. Better BF's got those heavy hands. Heavy, heavy hands, man. He touches you anywhere and you, you start crumbling. Matias is the same way. And the thing is that, you know, not only do they have heavy hands, and I can understand some fighters that have heavy hands, but they don't throw, like George Foreman or some other fighters in the past, they don't throw many punches as these two dudes do. You know, they throw punches in bunches to stop the fight. Uh, who was a coach for Max Dadashev in the fight between uh, Dadashev and Suriel Matia, was unfortunately Dadashev lost his life. Stopped it in the 11th round. Should have been stopped way sooner. But hey, guys, you know, that's the sport of boxing. You never know. You give it 100%, and, and you know, some of these guys have. Uh, the will, the courage, and and the gamemanship 
to continue fighting no matter what. And but these guys better be if and Matias, that they're a different breed. They're generational fighters. These are freaks of nature. These guys are definitely freaks of nature. I remember um, when he fought Jeremias Ponce, and we're talking about Suriel Matias now, when he fought for the title. It was the number one against the number two. Suriel Matias was num ranked number two at uh, IBF, and Jeremias Ponce was ranked number one. After the fight, after he stopped, after uh, the coach on Jeremias Ponce's corner stopped the fight, he was interviewed. And, and some of you guys that, you know, don't understand that are not real followers of boxing, don't understand uh, the magnitude and the generational fighter that we have in Matias and better be if. All right. And his manager said when they interviewed him, his coach, he said, you know what? The punches were bound. You can't train with that. You know, you, you can actually train your hands to, to get stronger. Do some exercises, get your hands a lot tougher and stronger and, 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 and heavy. But uh, these guys are born with that with that um, advantage over the other, others, you know. Next thing, the gas tank. These guys throw hundreds of punches. They don't get tired. Both Better Beef and Subirian Matias have excellent conditioning. They can go on for, for years. They can go on for many rounds, 15, 20 rounds. Non-stop. Imagine a, a guy coming after you like that, man. Imagine that. So, again, last night we saw a beast in Artur Berdorbiev destroy Callum Smith easily. Easily. You know, um, what's his name? Eddie Hearn. That guy talks a lot of shit, man. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's had all his British guys destroyed. By, by people from either America or from other countries. All his guys have been destroyed. This guy was destroyed. He was saying that uh, Callum Smith was going to knock out better BF. Come on, guys. These guys are unbelievable as far as taking punishment. They both move forward. They both get hit a lot. But they're able to take that those punches. They're like, like brick walls. They were saying it last night. What is this guy made of? You know, so I understand that uh, the media and those who actually are, are making the comments in, uh, in some of these fights have their favorite fighters. But come on, you got to give respect and you got to give credit where the credit is due. So Uriel Matias is just as dangerous or even more than Arthur better, better BF. Because he has killed somebody in the ring, unfortunately. And he's making people quit. So, Matias is a mini better BF version. He's a mini me of better BF. A smaller guy, but with the same attributes. They're identical twins. These guys are unbelievable. You know, and I, I truly believe better BF is going to be able to dominate and stop. Bevo, Bevo will not be able to hide, guys. Better be if doesn't get hurt by those punches. Better be if knows how to cut off the ring. He's on you like white on rice, and so is Matias. Haney will not be able to hide anywhere. Haney will not be able to take that pressure. Teofimo Lopez, if he fights, uh, Suria Matias is going to get knocked out. And so will Roli or any of these other fools. You know, so this is what I believe. This is what I saw last night. These are my, the similarities between both of these fighters. Let me know what you guys think. Who does Matias look more like? David Benavides or Artur Benavides? Anyway, guys, you know, please remember to like, share, subscribe. We're almost at a thousand already subs. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you sharing these videos with other knowledgeable fans like yourself. I will try to answer any comments that you have out there at least i'm liking all of them i'm putting likes on all of them uh, you know and some of them uh which are not knowledgeable fans i like to discuss a little bit about why i believe the way i do why i think the way i do why i think matias is a generational fighter all right guys god bless you all this is all for now
Until next time, this is Coach Mario, owner and head coach of Warriors Fry, saying hasta la vista. God bless you all and peace.